Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a delicious chicken tikka masala. It's easy, it's simple, and it beats doing it out of a jar every single time. Let's have a look. Now curries do often have loads of ingredients, but that's no reason to be bamboozled. If all you had was cumin, coriander, ginger, maybe a bit of garlic and a chilli, you could make a great curry. All the other spices do have their place, but they're often there just to jazz things up a little bit. So first of all, hit the thumbs up button. Then we have to chop half an onion. There's no fancy stuff going on with this style of cooking, so hack it up any way you please. Peel a bit of ginger with a spoon. Also peel a clove of garlic. And most importantly, to make a great chicken tikka masala, we have to marinate the chicken. This is going to give it a massive flavour boost and help to soften it up a little bit. I always use thigh as it's more tender and flavoursome. Cut it into manageable pieces. I prefer larger chunks. Just try to cut it evenly so that it cooks evenly. My girlfriend always prefers smaller pieces of chicken because of better distribution of chicken or something like that. Pop it in a bowl and add a teaspoon of ground coriander, a teaspoon of ground cumin, a pinch of garam masala, which is a secret blend of special Indian spices. Actually, it's not a secret. You can find the ingredients on Wikipedia. Half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, a little grating of fresh ginger, a little grating of fresh garlic, a sprinkle of salt, a little squeezing of lemon juice, a few dollops of yogurt, and mix it all together so that it's nicely coated. If you only take one thing from this video, please just marinate your chicken. Even if you're gonna make a curry out of a jar, this will make a huge difference. It's best to leave this in the fridge for at least a few hours, but it's still worth doing even if you plan to use it straight away. Either way, set it aside for now, because now it's time to toast the spices to release the aromatic flavors. Bonus points if you already toasted the spices for the marinade. In a dry pan on medium heat, add a teaspoon of ground coriander, a teaspoon of ground cumin, and half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper or chili powder. Gently toast them off for two or three minutes or until they've made you sneeze three times. Then set them aside for now. Now for a quick message from this week's sponsor. What's that? Oh, we don't have one. There's not even anyone there. Just me. Okay, this might be a good opportunity to subscribe if you haven't already. And back to the chicken. Using the same pan you toasted the spices in, turn up the heat and add a splash of oil. Then sear the chicken in batches. Don't just throw it all in at once or pile it all up on top of itself. It won't cook evenly, you'll lose all the heat in your pan and you won't get a good sear. And that's not what we're after here. It should be easy to turn when it's ready. We're just looking for a nice golden brown sear on either side. It doesn't have to be fully cooked through at this stage. We are going to cook it more later. Once you're happy that it's golden brown and crispy, set it aside for now. In the same pan, add a big knob of butter. And let's take a moment to appreciate that beautiful bubbly butter. Okay, throw in the onions and a few additional spices, a bay leaf, a couple of cloves and a cardamom pod or two. The great thing about this style of cooking is we don't have to fish these out at the end or tie them up in a little bag like the French do. They will soften up a bit as they cook, just leave them in there as a form of culinary roulette. We want to slowly cook the onions for 10 or 15 minutes until they become sweet. Add a sprinkle of salt to draw out the moisture and help with this process. Then add in a couple of dollops of tomato paste and the previously toasted spices. Cook that out for an extra two minutes or so, add in that beautiful seared, partially cooked chicken. Then realize that you were supposed to put some ginger in before the tomato paste. Let's just push that over to one side, grate a bit in there, smoosh it about a bit. This isn't really a proper technique, but sometimes you just have to improvise, adapt and overcome. Okay, now we're back on track, add 150 ml of cream and stir it in. Now it should be starting to look like a chicken tikka masala. Add a sprinkle of salt and about 100 ml of water just to loosen things up a little bit. Bring that up to a boil and let it bubble away until the chicken is cooked through. It really does have to be cooked through this time. Now we still have a few finishing touches, but first, time for a quick lesson on cooking rice. 
Now, if you've never washed your rice before, that's probably where you're going wrong. Pop it in a pot that's at least four times bigger than the volume of rice you're planning to cook. Run cold water over it and give it a good wiggle. We're just washing off the starch so we don't end up with a stodgy pudding. Wash it four or five times or until the water runs clear. You'll need one part rice to two parts cold water. And if you've ever wondered where they get fancy yellow rice from, the secret is a pinch of turmeric. This makes it yellow, but it also adds a nice earthy flavour. It's a strange way to describe food really, earthy. Might as well say it's dirty or soily. Anyway, you can add a cardamom pod and a sprinkle of salt. Pop that on a low to medium heat with a lid on it until it starts to boil, then turn the heat right off and leave it for 15 minutes until all the water has been absorbed. This way you have a minimal chance of overcooking it and this is pretty much what a rice cooker does. Okay, so the chicken tikka should be cooked through after 8 minutes, but it won't overcook if we keep it going longer. Have a little taste to make sure you're on the right track. Add an optional dollop of mango chutney to give it a fruity zingy pop, a dollop of yoghurt and a few tablespoons of coconut milk. I like to turn the heat right off to stir this in to avoid any danger of splitting. Don't just throw in a whole tin of coconut milk, that's going to make it really thin isn't it? Add a little sprinkle of that garam masala right at the end. This way it packs more punch but don't go crazy with it. Add a little squeeze of lime or anything else acidic to balance out the richness. Taste it again and adjust the seasoning. Often the difference between underwhelming and unbelievable is a little bit of salt and some lemon juice. This is definitely a recipe where it's okay to leave a few ingredients out or add different ones in. So just have a go and be confident. And there you have it, chicken tikka masala. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe for more culinary delights. Thanks for watching.